Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Stockport County. Since the last episode in which we lost against Bolton and beat Millwall and Warsaw, it's been a pretty mixed bag actually. Uh, so we lost to Swindon 2-1 in the league. We then beat Sunderland 1-0 in the uh, in the league. We then played Swindon again and lost 2-1 once again, this time in the FA Cup first round. We then beat Sunderland after penalties 3 all uh, in the game and then penalties we won it on, so we got two points from that game. We then beat MK Dons, and then we lost to Sheffield Wednesday. So it's been a, a really real mixed bag here. We've come back for um, the games against Oxford and Sunderland. We're going to play the Sheffield Wednesday game off camera. We don't need to see that. Maybe if we get further in the competition, we will show some uh, some games from the Papa John's. But we're out of the FA Cup, we're out of the Carabao Cup. That's the only cup competition we're left in now. So we're going to play Oxford and Sunderland today. Oxford are in 20th. Not doing well at all. And Sunderland are in 10th. They've dropped off uh, since the last episode. Uh, Oxford just outside the relegation zone. 22 games played. They've got a game in hand though. So they can pull away if they were to win that game in hand. I'm not sure if this is their game in hand or not. Uh, it may be. We have a game in hand over Southend and Bolton. Level on points with those points that we've dropped. Still top of the league. But it's a little bit of a dip in form. And it's the first one we've really had with Stockport County. Because we stormed through the National League and League 2. So it's the first real blip as such that we've had. We're going to get straight into today's game. We play Oxford in the first game. Hopefully that is a winnable game. Well it is a winnable game. So hopefully we can get three points from that. It makes the game against Sunderland a lot less stressful because if we don't beat Oxford then the game against Sunderland does become more of a must win game and I didn't want that to be the case so let's get into the opening game of the episode George Alexander by the way has hit that record now 23 goals in all competitions in 23 appearances in 22 starts 17 in 18 in the league the guy has already matched his total for last season been absolutely on fire um, and also we have a little bit of transfer news it's transfer out rather than in and Lewis Martin has gone to York he wasn't happy he complained he wasn't getting game time um, now I made a rod for my own back saying that I thought he could score 20 plus goals this season with his dribbling his finishing his first touch in that advanced forward role his passing wasn't great but with the rest of his and his physicals that he could possibly score 20 plus goals he hasn't done that he scored 2 in 8 Three starts, six substitute appearances. Hasn't has really flattered to deceive. Has really hasn't really uh, made a mark. So he has gone on loan to York. He's made three starts, one substitute appearance, got one goal thus far. So not really lighting up trees in the national league. And I made a bold claim when we signed him. I hope it really doesn't come back to bite me because I thought he could lead the line for this side. And all it's done is spurred Alexander on to become even better than he was last season so I suppose there is a plus out of it but yeah I'm hoping he can do a job in the National League maybe get 15 or 20 goals give himself some confidence he's still only 19 so he will be here for the foreseeable future because of the way we've been doing business at the club we haven't been making many signings each summer so hopefully he can still be there it's just that uh, temperamental personality that worries me a little bit but we'll take it as it comes hopefully he can start to find the net regularly and then he can come back to Stockport and do it for us. So the opening game away at Oxford, it's Webb in goal, Smith, Reed, Dunwoody and Pempathy across the back. Benjamin sat in front of them, Reed and McCann in the centre midfield, cover on the left, Green on the right, Alexander up front. The only downside is now we don't have an out and out striker to replace Alexander if he's out. Bather can play there as can Green and I believe there's one of the Donnelly of course can. So and Kavanagh can as well but Kavanagh really hasn't played too much this season. So we're relying on Alexander a lot. 23 goals already this season. Hopefully he can make 20 in the league. I mean, hopefully he can do that now. Score a hat-trick. Get us back on form. It's Oxford versus Stockport. And we need to win this to keep our lead at the top of the table. And we are underway here at Oxford. And Smith has been playing quite a lot recently. Um, obviously, we don't have a backup left-back behind Serino anymore. Is that ball over top? McCann, what a finish. He's onside as well. Charlie McCann. And everything I said in the transfer window, in the build-up to this season, the complete opposite has happened. Charlie McCann, I said I was worried about because he put in great performances in League 2. He dropped off a little bit. Sorry, he put in great performances in the champion, in the. Wow, I will get my sentence out. He put in great performances in the National League. 
Then he struggled, well, I say he struggled, he dropped off a little bit in League 2, and I thought maybe League 1 would be a bit too much of a step up for him, but nine goals already, absolutely fantastic job. As Reid now looks in field to McCann, goes back to Benjamin quickly and Pemberthy. McCann, oh, he's giving it well, say so giving away, cut out by Pring and Kamara, Gimmer, and that's cut out there, and Alexander can turn, in field to Benjamin, Reid, men getting forward, and... They weren't getting forward quick enough, really, to get a good ball up. And Benjamin can cut out that long ball. McCann looks forward to Reed. Alexander takes it down. Force wide. Can he pull the ball back? It's cut out by Milbank. And Kamara now can bring it away. Back to Pring. Back to the goalkeeper, Hemming. And that ball has been cut, uh, picked up by Honeyman. He can run at the defence. Hits the shot from distance and it hits the stanchion. It looked like it had gone into the back of the net. It did, and Gary Honeyman there with the first real chance. As McCann's ball in and done what he should score. Should at least hit the target. Great effort here. And it's still 1-0, 20 minutes gone. And Bolton are dropping away. Um, they're now on 46 points, 23 games. Colchester South End, both above them from the last episode, because Bolton were really challenging for top spot. They went to top spot when they beat us in the last episode. Not doing as well. Since then, saying that, Sunderland have dropped down to 11th. They were on the outskirts of the playoff in the last episode. It's going to be 1-0 as we get into half-time. We have dominated, but Brannigan puts in the ball. Green heads it away. Can we get him on the counter-attack? Kamara back into Brannigan on his right foot. Forced backwards. Has to go back to Pring. Alexander will put him under pressure all the way back to the goalkeeper, Hemi. And, oh, a mistake. And Alexander, because the man there was offside. Alexander, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Keeper's out of position. And he scores. And George Alexander gets his 24th of the season. And talk about a counter-attacking goal. Hemi's ball up green with the header. And who was that? Cover was definitely offside. He just left the ball for Alexander. And the keeper tried to dive at Alexander's feet. He just took it wide of him. And from a tightish angle, puts it into the net. It's 2-0. And what a time to get that second goal. 2-0. One in the first minute. One in the last minute of the first half. 2-0. And we're on our way to victory. Pring with the throw to Honeyman. Hugging the touchline. Infield to Kamara. Goes back to Pring and infield to McLaren. Looks like switch ball into, well, centre ball into Sims. And the shot is blocked. And Long can pick it up. Back to McLaren. All the way back to the defender, Connolly. Connolly picks it back up again. Has to go back to the goalkeeper, Hemming. And he looks long and hopefully we can deal with it. And Reed just nods it down to Webb in the Stockport goal. And that is exactly what we needed just to reset and get it forward. Smith now can bring it forward in the left fullback position. He's a big lad, is Smith. Can I have a look at him uh, once his highlight finished? As Smith there picks it back up, goes back to Pemberthy, he's gone a long way there. Switch ball out to cover, hits the shot, hits the outside of the post, still 2-0. Ball is fired up over halfway and Lung can collect it. We're into the final six minutes now of the game. Sims with his back to goal, goes back to Phillips. Lovely ball back into the path of Sims, into Honeyman. And what a save by Webb. Really making up for that last episode where he was really Jekyll and Hyde for us. He started as Hyde. Hopefully he doesn't finish uh, this episode as Jekyll. As Donnelly picks the ball up. Bather is making the run. Donnelly is slight tackled by Long. And it's out for a throw in on the near side. And it looks as if we're going to run out comfortable 2-0 victors here. We've really restricted Oxford to absolutely nothing. Just the one shot on target. That save there from Webb. Green looks at ball in field. It's blocked. And now Pemberthy goes back to Ewan. Into McCann. Benjamin. Back to Ewan again. McCann again, into green, nice little passage of play, nice little passing, just keeping hold of the ball, don't want to do anything stupid, ball look long towards Bather, tries to flick it on, Pring can win it, Kamara now, looks up boy to Honeyman, one on one, great run, great finish, Gary Honeyman has probably deserved that goal, he's been by far their most influential player, been at the centre of everything good they have done, Kamara touched it past his man, and it's a good ball, Honeyman got beyond the centre back, First touch, out of his feet, and just smashes it beyond Webb. Wasn't stopping that. It should be too little too late, though, as the time has already elapsed. We know, well, we went nearly 40 seconds over the two minutes of allotted time. It's a 2-1 victory. Disappointed not to keep a clean sheet. But job is done. Oxford won. Stockport 2. We'll miss the game against Sheffield Wednesday. We'll come back and show you the result. But job done. On to Sunderland. So a 2-1 victory away at Sheffield Wednesday in the Papa John's Trophy. Pretty even game for the most part. Goals from Alexander after 3 minutes and Donnelly after 74 minutes meant that we run out as 2-1 um, victors. That means in the next round we get... Has it been added to? We get Manchester City under 23s 
in the what round are we in northern section third round this could be tough i've no idea how good their under 23s are but looking at this straight away oh these are out on loan so uh benavides rated between 21 million and 28 million pounds so it's a local derby and i don't like I say some of these players down here simon Hughes is on 15 and a half k uh benavides is on 35k down here connor jarvis on 26 day no wait connor jarvis is on 7 uh 17 2 so some players that aren't big money if we just just gonna filter out the on loan players so this is the side 41k for jake john 21 year old welsh striker titus abo 24 and a half thousand we don't know the price of these i'm gonna see let's just scout them let's see how good they really are so on to the Sunderland game now and once we get any information about the Man City 23s I'll try and bring it to you if it's before the next episode we might come back for that actually as a local derby I'm sure I checked this before they are one of our fierce rivals so I might just show that game so as things stand we are still top of the table one game in hand over Southend and Colchester Bolton have played 23 as well so they can move up to 49 points it's very very tight at the top of the table we're on 50 south end are on 50 bolton could move to 49 you've got colchester on 46 sheffield wednesday on 45 but we have a nice 12 point gap over uh, swindon who are in seventh place i will show a swindon game as well before the end of the uh, season we play them well we will because we'll play the last two games for sure on camera swindon and oxford again unfortunately so Swindon who've had the beating of us beat us twice 2-1 in the league and cup hopefully we can uh, do something better we might need it as well how tight it is at the moment we might need it come the end of the season to actually go and beat them for the first time and the team for the home game against Sunderland it's Webb in goal it's Serena, Reed, Dunwoody and Pemberthy Benjamin sat in front of them Reed and McCann in the centre midfield and the front three is as you'd expect it's cover on the left Morris on the right Alexander playing up front probably as strong as we can go i think maybe benjamin sat in the uh, center center of defense maybe abbott or flynn marriott in that defensive midfield role but like i say it's nearly as strong as you can get so let's get into it home game versus sunderland doherty looks up more into spring as serino can head it away cover back into benjamin reed so we've lost one game so far this season that was the game against bolton a team that came up with us came at third in the league we were well clear of them was a game that I wasn't expecting to lose, considering where we both come from. Ball into Alexander, who's in behind the fullback, the defenders here, sorry. Alexander scores his 26th goal of the season. A great ball from Shaden Morris to pick him out. Alexander was behind the centre backs, I nearly said full backs, in behind the centre backs, and he just slots it home, and he has got some unbelievable confidence. That's a great ball in behind, set himself nicely, and that is a beautiful finish into the corner of the net. 1 0. 90 seconds or so on the clock as well and going ahead so early on this will take our lead at the top of the table to three points if we were to win today Serena will look for this ball in long good can edit away Reed picks it up into McCann held up gets the ball into Morris was he onside he was the flag didn't go up Benjamin Reed McCann into Morris chance flashes it across the goalkeeper and wider the post and that was a great chance here and McCann now will take the free kick from distance onto the top of the bar three great chances here we're inside 10 minutes the highlights are just flowing as Alexander looks very deep there as that flick on Morris is through one on one and he misses the target now and there's been chances for both teams this could be two or three one here so early on in this game great chance there for Carlton Morris as McCann now will take this corner out swinger re gets up heads it over and I think this is where we need Smith playing more games getting to that near post six foot six big lad and it's another goal kick morris will go up for it benjamin wins it cover now into serena looks forward for alexander in between the fullback and center back into reed ball cut out but it falls to mccann and charlie mccann with his 10th of the season and as i said before i was worried he wouldn't be able to make the step up once again this time to league one but he has shown that he is more than capable he got into a great position. He got fortunate, but it was the position he was in because the ball was meant for him in the first place. The interception went in, but it just fell loose. And McCann onto it, and a great finish from the central midfielder. It's 2-0. 
10th of the season for the midfielder and he has been a revelation here and he has made the step up but I thought he was going to be a backup this season he's been far from that and just looking at goal difference over the south end is nine better so only two better than Colchester but we're, we'll be seven points clear of Colchester if we hold on to this as a ball headed over the bar by Johnson at the far post Silly chance to concede. Luckily, they didn't convert. And at half-time here at Edgeley Park, it's Stockport 2, Sunderland 0. Ball fired out wide to Springer now. In behind his man. Pulls it back. McDonald, what a block that was from Dunwoody. Sliding in from behind. Luckily, he didn't take the player out. But he got a block on the ball. As Dabo now puts the point, Dunwoody heads it away. And just those two actions there should really give him a great rating for this match. Stopped an almost certain goal. And then from the resulting corner, headed away. Alexander's in behind once again. Alexander, great save. Probably should have gone across the goalkeeper. Tried to beat him as he's near post this time. It's still 2-0 as the hour mark approaches. Ball in and Reed gets up and heads it straight at Setford. It's still 2-0. And... We just don't want to let Sunderland back into this game now. Doherty into McDonald. Doherty again. Keeps the ball in play. Goes back to Harvey. Goes past his man. He's going to look for the crossing. But he goes in field to Neil. Doherty. Back to Neil yet again. McDonald. Harvey now has got a bit of space. Gets the ball in first time. And Dunwoody can hook it clear. And cover. Collects it. Out near the byline on this near side. Goes in field to Reed. Benjamin comes deep to collect it. Fires the ball into cover. In behind the fullback. Has to go back though to Serino. In field to Benjamin. Reed. Ball into Shaden Morris. One on one with the goalkeeper. And he scores from a very tight angle. Third goal of the season for Shaden Morris. I thought he'd scored more than that, if I'm honest. And I thought he'd done too much with it as well. Benjamin into Reed just chips it into the path of Morris. And like I said, I thought he'd done too much. Took the ball to a very tight angle. But he puts it inside the goalkeeper. It's 3-0. There's a tight offside as well. I know there's no VAR, so it doesn't matter. Oh, no, he's just timed that run to perfection. Defender there had no chance and half an hour to play. It's 3-0 and we have been very, very good today. 15 minutes left to play here, well, just a little over. And we knew that Bolton were going to be a threat because of how highly rated they were by the media. And they have proven just that. Considering the fact that they came up through the playoffs, I personally didn't think they'd be as much of a threat as they have been. Um... I thought Sunderland may be a bigger threat, especially as, as Harvey fires over the bar there. A bit wayward from him. I thought Sunderland would be the bigger threat because, obviously, they were challenging for the league title with us. They were right there with us up until the final game of the season, in which they actually drew to Bolton. But we have run out 3-0 victors here. Very comfortable. Absolutely boss that. Sunderland really had nothing. Alexander with a 7.5, Morris with an 8.4, McCann with an 8.5, sensation for him. And look at that back five there with Webb. Webb 7.5, Serena 7.6, Reed 7.2, Dunwoody 7.9 and Pemberthy 7.5. It's a 3-0 victory. We'll have a look at the league table. We'll have a look when we're going to come back next as well. What a performance from the boys. So the league table looks like this. All level on games now. Stockport, Southend and Colchester. Bolton still have a game in hand so they can still move to 49 points. We are three points clear of Southend. Seven points clear of Colchester. If Bolton win their game in hand we'll be four points clear of the playoffs. We have a 15 point lead over seventh place. So we're in a good position here. 24 games into this season. As for the next episode, we'll prob we're will we going to come back as a single episode, I think. We're going to come back for the Man City under-23 games. It's a fierce rival, even if it is their under-23s. We have the home advantage. It should be a sellout out Edgeley Park, I think. And hopefully we can go further than we did last year and make, I believe, the quarterfinals after this. Um, so if we look at the rules, let's just have a look. So we're in the northern third round. So it'll be the quarterfinals, north and south in the next um, next round if we were to beat Manchester City. Hopefully we can do that. Um, finances, because I haven't shown you, we've kind of moved into the red now. £21,875,000 in the red. That's not too bad, all things considering. I mean, the projection doesn't say a lot. It reckons we'll be in nearly £6 million of debt come the end of 2031-32 season. I don't think that will necessarily be the case. We're in an OK position. And the one thing as well we have got is we've got some saleable assets. I mean, Pemberthy is valued between 600000 and 1.2. Dunwoody's coming, wants a new contract. I'm just going to show you it now, which has a £5 million release uh, fee in it. Hopefully, 
we don't have to uh, we don't have to use that. But if it do, if if he does become a hot commodity, he is our best player on Star Racing twenty one. He may get looked at by some uh, some bigger clubs. So that five million pound release clause is in there just in case, um, and that will set us up beautifully. If, that would be the case. Anyway, enough talking from me. That is the end of the episode. We have had back-to-back victories here. We're in prime position. Fight bravely against relegation. No chance. 53 points. We are looking for another promotion. We are looking for another league title. Back-to-back-to-back promotions would be fantastic. But even better would be back-to-back-to-back league titles. And hopefully we can do that. We'll be back for the Man City game in the Papa John's Trophy. Just a standalone game. And then we'll be back in the league after that. I will make the decision now. We'll be back in the league after that for the games against... Let's have a look. Colchester, Bolton, Sheffield, Wednesday, Charlton. So we'll come back at the end of March. We'll play Charlton and we will play... Either Wickham or Carlisle. I'm not too sure yet. We may come back and play Wickham. We haven't played them yet. We played Carlisle obviously last season. So we'll come back... For the Man City game and then we'll play through until March and we'll come back for the Charlton game and the Wickham game. If you enjoyed today's video please leave a like on it, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.